Hi, my name is Liz Feezy and I'm here to make Canva simple for you. So no fancy introductions here, we're going to dive straight into how you can add a picture into a shape on Canva. If you're new to Canva and you haven't worked here before, check out my Canva tutorial here just about the basics, but I'm going to assume at this point that you are familiar with Canva. So let's get straight to it, shall we? Create a design. Let's make a... let's go with a logo. I'm not making a logo now, I just picked a Canva so that we can get going. Say for instance, I'm doing something for marketing, something for an assignment, and I have a picture that I need to add in a cool kind of frame. So whatever frame you have in mind, you can go and check in Elements, find it either at the bottom, you can look if it's perhaps already there, there's frames and there's grids, or you can just type in here what you're looking for. So let's say you don't know what you're looking for. See all in frames. It can become a mindless scrolling, so it helps if you have an idea, but you can literally just go and see what do you have in mind? Is it a design that you're making for marketing? Is it a collage that you're making? Is it something that looks a little bit cool? There's a post stamp. You can go nuts with fruit shapes if you want to. You can literally just go, there, there are even letters and numbers that you can add images to. So either you already have pictures that need to go in here or you're looking for pictures. If you have an idea of what you want but you don't have a picture, free photos. Either on Canva, so you can see there's pictures, and these are all free pictures that you can use on Canva, or on Pixels, or on Unsplash. If you go to Apps, you can add pixels here. There you go. And then you can just add it there. The same with YouTube videos, by the way. You can add YouTube here, and you can incorporate YouTube videos in whatever you're making in your designs. Say I want to start with photos. I want to add a picture of a dad playing guitar, or man. This is in the free photos from Canva. All you do, and look out for the little crown because those are pro pictures that you can only get on Canva Pro. If there's no little crown, it means it's a free picture on Canva. You literally click, drag over the image and drop. And basically you're done. Now, maybe you want to adjust it in the picture because the way you dropped it doesn't look really nice. Let's test it in one of the other pictures above. Let's do the same guy there. But you can see now I can add him three different times because there are three different pictures. So I just keep adding him. Keep adding him. And this is actually apparently showing you some torn picture or something. But now maybe I want them to line up a little bit better. So I can use that middle one, double click, and I can drag it any way I want to. Can you see it's a little bit transparent so you can actually see what's going on behind the picture. And this is to help you readjust your pictures in relation to what is already on the design. And then you just say, done. Now that one as well. So I can make it a little bit bigger, drag it up and down, and there you basically have three pictures in one. You don't have to do this. You can literally take another picture and add it there. It doesn't really matter. Undo, either at the top there, or Control Z, Command Z. And then another thing that you can do is to ask a Canva to smart crop. So if you say smart crop, it's gonna think, and it's going to put it the way it thinks it should fit into that picture, which is, which is most of the time just fitting the picture into the parameters of top of top and bottom and left and right frames so that it fills out. It doesn't really stretch it or makes it smaller, it just basically fits it into the frame. So that's one. But I don't like it. I like that one more. So now we've got a little puzzle picture. And maybe now you don't find any picture that you like in here. Then you go to pixels and you type in the same. And you say, man playing guitar. Now there are different ones. I like this one. I'm going to add this one here. But you can see it's a little bit off center. So if I double click, you can try and shift it up or down. If it doesn't want to shift, you just make it a little bit bigger until you can fill it. When it comes to a background, so say you want to add this picture as a background, you right click and you say set image as background. Very easy. You want to take it out, click and detach. Okay, the same works if you want to get a picture out of a frame. So you will go to here. If you move it now, the whole thing is going to move. All you do is you click right, right click, detach, and your picture is gone again. Now, sometimes you have more than one picture in a frame. So say for instance, that one, I detach and I delete it. And I'm going to add this one. Okay, look now what's happening as I'm going over. If I'm going over a frame, it wants to replace what is in that frame. Can you see it? Wherever I hover. And if you by accident drop it, it's going to do that. And I don't want to do that. And a very nice way to do it is if you hold down control or command when you do that. So can you see now, you can hold it from the moment you drag it, or what you can do is you just click on the picture 
and it will throw it in there. Now you can still move it around, but you can see it wants to replace everything. The moment, and then you have to just go and get it out of there again. Control, click on the picture, hold down Control or Command, and you can see wherever I go, it's not doing anything. It doesn't want to replace anything until I get to where I want to be, and then it goes. And it is really as simple as that. Now the difference between grids and frames is frames is normally one picture at a time. This is a little bit different. This one is a little bit different. Grids normally fill the entire background and it's a combination of pictures. So let's look at it. The biggest difference with grids is that you can adjust the size of a grid. So if I have, you can see this is a square grid, but I can make it smaller to fit in whatever I want it to be. So if I create an extra page and I bring this down here, this is what I can do with the grid. Whereas if I go with the frame, I can't do that. If I change, if I take this one, it doesn't matter what I do, the frame is going to stay the same dimensions. But with a grid, I can change it. So now if I go back to my photos, this is really nice if you do like website design and you want images. So now I can adjust it and as I'm going up or down, it will automatically adjust with the picture inside. And you can also find more grids down here. These are all frames, let's go back to the grids. And here you can see there's different ways of putting it together. And this is where it's really nice if you work with collages. Remember, if you click delete, it will remove the picture. You have to click delete again to remove the frame. So let's say here we have these ones. Let's find more man playing guitar. This is where it becomes really nice with the grids. And now you can also adjust it if you want to. So if you are going this way, it automatically adjust everything. Can you see how nicely it fits in there? And this is why grids are really nice because you can actually customize it to whatever you're working on in the moment. And as a final bonus, if you are still looking for more pictures, go to unsplash.com. And here you've got obviously your free version, which I've always used. I've never used the Pro, but you obviously get a lot better images if you use the Pro. Man playing guitar. There you go, same guy. You might often find similar pictures in these places, but you have options. You are never going to run out of stock images. And if you really still don't have a picture, then you go to AI. Then you just create your own from scratch. Okay, so a bonus tip. If you want to do mock-ups. So for instance, say I, li I really like this picture, but I want it to look different. You click on it and you go to edit photo. Then here at the bottom, you will find mock-ups and it's giving you a ton of options where you want to incorporate this picture on a mug, on a teddy bear, on a t-shirt, on a computer, on a tablet. Look here, you can see popular ones, smartphones, computers, tablets, packaging even, frames or branding, which is really nice if you have a business. So say we want to show this somewhere, say you're doing online guitar lessons. Then whatever you click on, I like that one, but I'm going to open it up so we can see more options. And you can go and decide which one do you like. There are not hundreds and hundreds of options here, but I think there's enough that you'll actually find something that works for you. So let's stick with that one. Okay, so if the picture doesn't go automatically, you can try and drag the picture, but if the picture is behind, like this one is behind, it might not work. So if I just change my picture to the front, position and front, let's see if it wants to go in there. If it starts to go a little bit transparent, you know you're in a good spot. It loads for a moment, and then it's going to give you a very nice looking design that you can, and if you struggle to fit it in nicely with the background, you keep dragging it until it fits whichever way you want it to fit. Maybe you've got some text at the bottom or something. And that's how you do a mock-up. By the way, if you want to know how to make a logo, check out my video about the logos here. You'll see how easy it is to make a logo on Canva as well. I hope it's helped you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other suggestions or tricks up your sleeve that you want to share with the rest of the community. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.